Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Uh, today we're going to be converting an FPS shooter into a third person shooter. We're also going to set up the weapon uh, for the character to hold and we're going to set it up so that we can fire. Uh, it's really simple, we're, to be fair there's not going to be hardly any blueprint, if any at all. Um, we can copy and paste most of uh, pre-made code, uh, rearrange it a little bit and everything should work as, as expected. So here's a quick example of what we're going to make. So you've got a third person character running around with a gun, I've got a crosshair and then of course when you fire you get the projectile as you'd expect. Um, and it goes towards the crosser. So, with that being said, let's jump straight into it and get this bed. Okay, so just before we proceed, just one thing I want to make sure this is clear. Um, I'm going to be making this off a first person template. Now I know I, this is going to be a third person, but the first person template comes with some blueprints already made. That's going to make our lives a little bit easier. So that's why we're going to use it. Um, so that being said, with your first person template, let's crack on. So, first things first, what I want you to do is just delete the first person character within the world. Because uh, we're not going to need this. Now, the other thing is, we're going to be using the animation starter pack. Now, obviously, the first person template has, has two sets of arms and a gun. Um, but we need a third person character model. Now, the animation starter pack is a brilliant pack for, uh, for making games with weapons. Uh, it comes with some pre-made animations, you know, crouches, jumps, um, for aiming, hip fire and all sorts of stuff. So this is going to be perfect for what we need. Uh, this is free, so you can just go to the marketplace now and add it to your project. So I'm going to press add to project, I'm going to click on my project, press add, and for the first time it will download, so it will take a little bit longer, but it is really small, and then once it's downloaded it takes seconds to add to your project. So with that being said, we'll now jump back into the project, and if you want to go to your contents folder you'll notice you now have a new folder called Animation Starter Pack. Within the Starter Pack there are many animations as I discussed, um, so you've got all sorts of stuff here like death animations, you've got crouch idle hip fire, um, you've got jogging with a rifle, you've got um, you've got all sorts of stuff. You know, you've got prone, led down, uh, sprinting, many animations. So you've got lots of stuff to play with. But they've also provided a uh, character blueprint already set up for you to to get going with. Uh, now this is really good because if we if we just open this up, what you can see is if we go to the viewport move this over. As you can see the character is sort of ready, stood, with his hands expected to hold a gun. Now this is brilliant and also if we go to the mesh we can see that there's a full animation class already set up. So this has done half the work for us. So simply what we need to do, if you go back to the main screen, I'm just going to reduce this menu down a little bit so it doesn't take up all the screen. A bit more than that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press blueprints and I want to go to the game mode and I want to edit the first person game mode. Now you can create a brand new game mode but for the purpose of this video I'm just going to edit the first person. And essentially what we want to do is in the default classes we want to change the default pawn class from the first person character to our UE4 animation starter pack character and that's here. Now one other thing that I'm going to actually uh, let you in on, um, which is very helpful, is sometimes when you've got these default classes or if you've got like a main character um, that you just want to make some adjustments of, what you can actually do, you can right click on, on the character itself and you can create a child blueprint class. Now what a child does is it, it takes everything that the parent has and starts afresh from there. So it's almost like adding a new layer on top of an already existing character. So all the animations will be the same, it's just everything, anything that we do from now on will only affect the child and it won't affect the parent. Benefits of doing this are, you can create multiple slightly different variations of one character. So we could change the colour of this one and it won't affect the parent, uh, and you could create several of these and you'll have several different varieties of character. Another good reason for doing it is if you make any mistakes, you're not going to affect the core mechanic of your character. You're only going to make a mistake of what you're adding to it. Um, and this is one of the reasons I like to create Childs. Because um, it prevents me from messing up stuff that's already working. 
Now, I'm going to call this one Player B. And, and with my Player B, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this Show Sources panel so I can see all the contents. And I'm just going to drag it to my contents and press Move here. And I'm going to go back to my contents and my character is now right at the top. This just makes it easier for me to find whilst I'm doing this tutorial. Great, so now we've got Player B. So if we go back to the player game mode now and we want to change the default pawn class from the first person to our new newly created child, player B. And then what I'm going to do is press compile. I'm going to go back to the example map and I'm going to press play. And now straight off the bat you can see we've got this character that moves around, uh, he can jump, uh, I'm pretty sure he can crouch if I remember the key. Okay, I think I've not set crouch up. Uh, crouch is in there as well and you know this is pretty much half of what we're working towards done so let's come out of that and let's go and edit our player b so here we are player b so characters already set up the animations are inherited from the uh, ue4 animation starter pack everything that the parent had the child has so all we need to do now is get a gun in here and get it to fire and um, we're more or less done. So to do that, let's select the mesh and let's add another component. And we want to select skeletal mesh. Now I'm going to call this one weapon. And now the weapon skeletal mesh requires a mesh being loaded in. So over on the right hand side here where it says skeletal mesh, if you want to click from the drop down, because we've um, because we've created this from an FPS, the first person gun is already an asset within the game. So we can just select this from the list. And you can see now that the gun is loaded in at the bottom of the, of the character. Now obviously this is not where we want it to be, we want it to be in the hands. But just before we make any adjustments, what, what's a good thing to do is, under the, um, the menu here, socket, we can actually socket it to um, our character model. Because obviously the weapon is a child of the mesh. Once we click on this little magnifying glass, it will show us every bone that um, our character is made of. Now, one of the uh, options is hand R. So what this is done now, this is this has taken the, uh, the the weapon mesh, and it's kind of like welded it to his wrist. Uh, so basically, every time the character moves around the gun will follow his movement in terms of um, sort of like his wiggling, his jumping and his actions. Obviously this now helps us, this makes it a bit more realistic but obviously while the gun's pointing inside him that's not going to be good. So let's go to the, the rotation, make sure you've still got the weapon selected before you do this. And under the Z uh, we're just going to press 90 and that at least puts the gun in the right direction. But it's still like in the middle of his wrist, so let's pull it forward a little bit. Um, now you can use the arrows, but you know with some fine tuning. If we press A, let's, let's have a look. Let's see. Yeah, it's not quite right. Let's see if we can pull it back a bit. Maybe five. You know that doesn't seem too bad. That looks like he's gripping it a little bit. But his, his hand's still a little bit weird here, so let's move it on the X a little bit, maybe... Let's try 5 first. Oh no, minus 5. Uh, minus 6. Mm, minus... We'll go for minus 8. You know what? That'll do, I think. Great. So let's hit compile. Let's press play. Let's just give that a quick check. So great, now we can see we've got him running around. Uh, and he's got a gun in his hand. Perfect. So let's set up that shooting. Because what's the point of having a gun if you can't fire it? Okay? So, this one could be really simple too. Um, like I said at the beginning, we've started with an FPS template because there's some blueprints already created which is just going to make our life a lot easier. So if we do go back to the first person example map, and then if we want to go to the first person BP, open up blueprints and we just want to open up the first person character and what we're going to do uh, we're just going to have a little look of how the first person gun works so what we've got is well uh, what we've got is obviously the gun um, but then the gun seems to have a sphere in the barrel 
and if we have a look at the event graph at the spawn projectile we can see that when the fire button is pressed there's an animation and it spawns a projectile and it gets its transform from the sphere so okay it's getting the position of the sphere adding a gun offset to it it's adding a gun offset um, in relation to the first person camera and that is its position to fire from so this means we're going to need to create the sphere ourselves um, so then I'm going to assume that this is done because if you spawn a projectile from the location of the weapon it would actually be here where his hand is which is the anchor point of the gun so they've done this as a kind of offset to stop the, the bullet from spawning within the gun and causing it to collide with the with itself so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to take all of this spawn projectile uh, blueprint we're going to press Control and c copy that and we're going to move over to the player b and we're going to press paste and I'm just going to line this up a little bit nicer. Okay. And again, we need the sphere underneath the gun. So if we go back to our weapon, we're going to add a component. We're going to put sphere. And there it is. It's a severe, uh, sphere collision. So if I go to the viewport, you'll see that that's absolutely massive and it's in the wrong place. But what we can do to make this a little bit easier for ourselves, if we go back to the first person character, uh, select the sphere you can see all of its location data here so if we right click on location and press copy we can go back to player B now and under sphere we can press paste on the location okay that's put it in the right position brilliant and now what we'll do we'll do the same for the rotation and the scale so copy paste on rotation and back here for scale copy and again paste for scale so now as we can see this looks almost identical to this. Well, not almost, it is identical. It's just in a third person character rather than an FPS. So that's one thing set up, that's brilliant. So under player B, we've now got sphere underneath our weapon and now we need to fix this event graph. Because if you press compile, you'll notice you'll get little errors everywhere and that's because you know there are subtle differences or there are things that just don't quite work anymore so here we've got motion controllers now we're not going to be using any motion controllers or I'm not so I'm just going to press delete on all of that I'm going to delete this, um, this transform I'm going to delete this little extra node and I'm just simply going to connect this uh, transform to this spawn and that's that um, the other thing we've got now is, so the sphere works because we created that component. The gun offset, we've not actually, we don't have a variable called gun offset. So if you want to just right click and you can create a variable gun offset and that just makes it for you. If you compile, that error should go away. Now, one thing you should know about the gun offset is under the first person character, there is actually some... Um, some numbers here under the default value for the offset so similarly to how we did the sphere we can just copy those values go back to player B and we can select the gun offset and we can paste them in and there we go we've got the same offset as it was on the first person character now for this error we've got a first person camera obviously we are in third person now so we need to remove that first person camera and we just need to select our player camera and drag that in as the target and press compile and this should correct that error. Now lastly this is the uh, character mesh of the first person arms which would then play a uh, sort of like a, a weapon fire uh, jerk or like a shake um, when the weapon's fired. Uh, we don't have that animation so you could um, just delete that or I would just recommend dragging in our mesh. Now, obviously when this code or this blueprint uh, sort of triggers, it's gonna try and find a uh, fire montage under our mesh and it's not gonna find it. But for the main part, it's not gonna cause any errors. So you could just, uh, you could even remove that or you could just do this and leave it in. So for the most part now, 
um, all of this should work absolutely fine. So let's give that a quick test. So if we press play, get into the game and shoot. Apart from the default volume being far too loud, um, the gun is firing based on where we're looking. So, uh, quickly what I'm just going to do is I'm going to lower the volume of that first person uh, sort of weapon fire. I'm just going to go to the first person audio and open up the sound wave and I'm just going to reduce the volume down to 0.25. Uh, as I'm wearing headphones that is a little bit too loud for me. Um, you don't have to do that but it just helps me uh, keep my sanity while I'm going through this. So, um, obviously at the moment the crosshair doesn't doesn't really correspond to where the the shot's going, and it's not that we can tell because the character's right in the way of our our weapon as well. So, what I find the best thing for this is um, most third-person FPSs, the, the, you know, the camera's either like above the character or over the shoulder of the character so we can do the same so if you want to select the character and I'm gonna move this over maybe by 70 and I'm gonna move this up by 30 so essentially it's in position 70 70 although on the location at the top it says 70 40 so you can copy these numbers too and if I press compile and play now we're over the shoulder of the character and I think this looks and feels a lot more like a third person shooter but if we fire now you'll notice that you know the crosshair doesn't really correspond to uh, to where the actual projectile is going so we can just slightly adjust this now in the first person blueprint and blueprints you'll notice you've got a first person hood and if we open that this is where they are taking the X and Y of the screen dividing it in two which would be the center of the screen but to make it align to where the projectile goes because it's because the gun is to the right of the character it's slightly offset they've done an offset Y to align the crossover with the projectile now obviously because we turn that turn this project into a third person we need to offset it even more so um, what I think would be the best numbers uh, because I have how to play with this beforehand is if we plus 50 uh, this should give us you know kind of like the right height of the projectile but we also need to change where the position is on the X and what I find works best is if we do a minus integer and hook this up and we want a minus 20 hit compile so we've got minus 20 on the X and plus 50 on the Y if we press play now, hopefully that projectile, for the most part, follows where the projectile is going. Uh, sorry, where the crosshair is going. So, as much fun as that is, that's the project complete. We've now got a third person character with animations. You've got the crosshair set up and the projectile fires as you expected. If this helps you out, uh, please consider giving me a like, consider subscribing if you like the content and you want to watch, uh, watch some more videos as they come out in the future. And with all that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video. Thank you.